Hey, beautiful people. Welcome back to the Mindset Alchemy podcast. And if you're new, welcome. We're delighted to have you here for this very special episode with Alison Zadler, all the way from, please tell us where you are from, what you do, and all that sort of thing, Alison. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, Alison yeah. Zeidler, and I live in Northwestern Canada, up beside Alaska. So I live in Whitehorse, Yukon Territory, and I'm a holistic wellness facilitator. And I work with people, um, mostly women, and I also work with animals. So generally speaking, what I do is I help people, again, predominantly women, <laughs> release their anxiety their their pain their trauma um so that they're calm confident uh in control of themselves and and you know as much as we can ever be um about our surroundings right <laughs> and the events around us <laughs> <Like that. laughs> yes and and that allows us to regain um, motivation and an enthusiasm and passion for our life, right? Chronic anxiety, chronic stress, um, overwhelm. It, it just, if we're not careful, it beats us down. It eats and us then as well, yes. It does. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, um, it's one of the things that we actually have quite a bit of control over. Uh, believe it or not. And if we learn the tools to to manage and eliminate the effects of that overwhelm and <laughs> anxiety, then we do. We, we can regain a, an enthusiasm for life. But more importantly, we feel more grounded, more centered, more connected. And if all the women in the world live that way, imagine how powerful we'd all be and what we could accomplish oh my goodness my brain is just expanding at the thought <laughs> that's amazing uh, Alison thank you before we go any further because of where Alison lives her wi-fi has some interesting hiccups so be patient with the sound because like I say to everybody Janine is unavailable to edit this stuff and she has nobody else to do it at the moment. Well, she does, but I just feel that you're getting what you're hearing. Alison, that's amazing. Tell us how you got here and what it explored. I've got about 40 questions. So let's start with the first one and see how we go. How did you get to where you are now and what happened in your life to bring you on this path? Fascinating, right? Um, thank you. So I've always had a love for animals. And, and so animals has always been sort of my gateway into, into anything. And I had a fairly dysfunctional growing up life, like, like most people do, right? Um, my mother had been married five times by the time I was 15. Um, yep, <laughs> lots of upheaval in, in early childhood, right? And so we learn coping skills and coping mechanisms to, you know, try and keep us safe because that's what kids do. And uh, when I was about, well, in my early 30s, um, those coping mechanisms stopped working. And, and that's usually the age where um, we start having lots of issues. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing, you know, regular counseling and, you know, the, the sort of the traditional healing methods, right? And, and it helped for sure, right? Um, and then I started going to Al-Anon, uh, which is a, a self-supporting self-help group for relatives of alcoholics. Mm -hmm. And that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. But there were still gaps, right? There was still things that that those two more traditional therapies, I'll say, um, left. Old systems, yeah, exactly, yeah. Old systems, yeah. and I wanted. Uh, I've always wanted to do something like to to be of use, 
Mm -hmm. I stumbled across a pet reflexology course and I thought, oh, that would be fascinating. Let's do that. <laughs> and I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. And I thought, hmm, that's really, really interesting how it works and, and what it can do. So I thought, oh, I'll do a people reflexology course. So I did that. And then I thought, oh, I need to do more things like this. So I, I took some energy healing courses. And so over the years, um, I, I have like a huge wall of certificates. <laughs> I saw you there. People you'll see yeah. in, the, uh, in the show notes afterwards. It's very, very impressive. <laughs> and and so it just sort of snowballed. And so I've I've always had like a day job hmm. as a, a legal assistant. And okay. it was actually quite a nice sort of balance between you know the the linear thinking the work on this file put it away work on the next file put it away and then the more sort of woohoo things right and <clears throat> I've just recently retired from my day job which is awesome enjoyed my summer immensely oh. but one of the reasons why I kept taking courses was that little voice in the back of my head that always kept telling me that I'm not good enough and I don't know enough. <laughs> Imposter syndrome, yes. Yes, definitely. And and it took me a long time to sort of settle in and, and say, okay, I I, I am enough. <laughs> I am okay. People who need me will find me. And I can't help everyone because ah. my skills are here. Sometimes mm -hmm. people need skills that are over here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need a combination. <laughs> so it's it 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 really over the years I've reconnected to myself. Right. I've been able to release the anger that I grew up with that I carried with me for a long, long, long time. And, um, you know, it's not to say I still don't get angry. <laughs> you human. But, exactly. But it it's not all consuming like it used to be, right? I don't live in anger. And <clears throat> that's one of the, I'll call it a side effect of growing up in a dysfunctional home. Right. Um, not everyone comes out of a dysfunctional home being angry. Um, but I, I know a lot of women in particular who are angry. And even if they keep it inside, <laughs> it's still there. Yes. And it's um it, it's as I said, we do have control over our emotions to a large extent. We really do. We have a huge amount of control over our own health. Mm -hmm. We need to find the tools that work for us. Yeah. That that allow us to move forward in life. Yeah. Thank you. Which is your favorite tool that helped you the most oh. in the beginning? Obviously, you've changed in the, in the beginning. Yeah. In the beginning, that would have been energy healing, quantum touch energy healing and it's a modality that I use almost every day mm -hmm. uh, it's it's easy to learn it was one of those things that that I took this this you know two-day course and I went oh this is it this is what speaks to me mm -hmm. and it uh, super easy to learn I teach it now um, and I do I use it pretty much almost every single day with uh, my human clients, with friends, uh, on airplanes, <laughs> crying babies, mm -hmm. um, animals. Animals are, are very um, in tune with energy, much more so than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, there's so many stories, stories of healing, um, stories of releasing. And 
and it is it's 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 sort of my go-to mm. modality yeah beautiful how did you evolve from uh, the quantum healing what was the next one that came to your attention um, I took a lot of, of different courses that I didn't get certified in, right? wow. but I, I took them, um, uh, EFT tapping, um, and um, a lot of animal body work courses. Uh, I'm an um, equine massage therapist, although I don't really use it much anymore. And um, usually I would, I would look at how can I help an animal? What's the next course? Okay. And, and, um, oh. and then I got into muscle testing, Touch for Health, yes. uh, which is um, uh, here in Canada, uh, specialized kinesiology courses. And I teach that too. That's an amazing, fascinating modality. It, 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 it can clear out so much. There's so many applications of it. Um, mm -hmm. So those, those two, the quantum touch and the touch for health um, and then heart math. Again, another, another one that helps to regulate our nervous system mm -hmm. so that when we get upset, when we get angry, when we get anxious, we can actually bring our nervous system back to a state of calm. Because when we get all like this, mm -hmm. we can't think very well. We make silly decisions. Uh, we're paralyzed. Um, it, it just, we don't function very well. Mm -hmm. And if we can get our nervous system calmer mm -hmm. and our brain, our heart mm -hmm. uh, back in sync with each other, then we can function. We can cope with life's events because life always happens. Yucky things happen. Good things happen too. Um, but life is life. Yeah. yeah. Life is life. For those of you on the podcast, um, Alison was like showing frustration, being squashed and squished. And so many of us do feel this way. Alison, how have you experienced animals taking on their owner's challenges or vice versa? Have you had that experience? Yes, I have. And it's a fascinating question. I, I firmly believe that animals come to us for reasons, right? They come to help us. They come to teach us. And they do take on some of our stuff for sure. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that they are on their own path and uh, they have their own destiny and they have their own purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. And over the years of, of working with animals, mm -hmm. uh, especially with uh, trauma and mm -hmm. releasing, releasing trauma, uh, helping behavioral issues, mm -hmm. um, they very much have their own crap going on in their own lives right they really do and um it's it's amazing how they're still willing <laughs> and they're still able to take on some of our stuff you know and and they really do teach us things that we need to know in our own lives to be to be better to be to grow maybe not to be better that that's kind of a makes it sound like we're, we're yeah, not exactly. good enough but well there's always be, be there's always good better and best so you know we can always move and expand we live in a world of expansion and everyone thinks no we should be in constriction rather than in expansion and so i yeah i've had actual experience of my labrador work as I work with clients he takes on the client's issues and I didn't understand this and until I was dealing with somebody whose child had uh, paralysis and next thing my Labrador couldn't move he couldn't stand up and he just cried and cried and cried and Holy. energetically clear him I, I knew I heard immediately clear the child's energy um, but it, it took us six weeks 
because he kept reaching out to support the child. And I had to make a very clean break there. Um, so yeah, I, I, that, the reason I asked was because I've had a very personal experience. And subsequently, when I work with clients, very often he'll come and sit right by me if he feels they are, I know when they're going to get upset and so does he before they get upset and he comes and he sits right by me and he'll like put, try and put his paw on the table. So um, Alice, what are you currently busy with at the moment and what is making you sparkle and shine? <laughs> I love the way you ask questions. <laughs> I am currently... <laughs> working on a program I, I have a 90-day program for women mm -hmm. who experience chronic anxiety overwhelm that chronic stress and burnout that so many women experience right and the 90-day program it's going to cover tools mm -hmm. so I'm going to offer a bunch of different tools emotionally mentally, physically, energetically, and spiritually to help manage and eliminate the effects of anxiety and chronic stress and overwhelm. Mm -hmm. We can't think properly. Mm -hmm. We don't function very well. Our sleeping sucks usually. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> we, we just want to get in the car and drive and, yeah. and not come back. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of programs out there that uh, focus on exercise and nutrition mm -hmm. and mindfulness. And those are all important things, right? But most doctors will tell you if you go to them because you're chronically burnt out or stressed or anxious, whatever. Well, just eat right, get some sleep and exercise and you'll be fine. And, and it doesn't go far enough. It really doesn't. How many women do you know who are doing all of those things and they're still a basket case, right? A lot of them, because that's not, that's the treating the symptoms again, which medicine is yes. very good at rather than going to the root cause. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, I did, I wanted to have something that would offer enough tools that that we can mix and match. So some days we need to regulate our nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. We can do that with heart math. We can do that with energy clearing. But some days we need more physical support mm -hmm. to, to help our bodies function better, right? So if we are... Um, just sluggish right if our organ system is not just working as well as it could mm -hmm. got tools that can help support the body mm -hmm. and and i did the this this sort this 90 day program sort of came to me all at once and mm -hmm. you know in about 20 minutes i had the whole thing mapped out it was awesome <laughs> thank you thank you spirit <laughs> That's wonderful yes. That's inspired <laughs> thought and now you've mm -hmm. put it heart and you've taken action yay yes well. <laughs> yeah because some days we need massage some days we need a chiropractor some days we need mindfulness right we we hearing, need enough yeah what Go i'm ahead. hearing flexibility that you what you're offering is a form of flexibility be flexible and compassionate the word that keeps coming up when i'm listening to is kindness and compassion actually two words <laughs> yes yeah yeah that was um compassion for myself was a huge shift in my own thinking mm -hmm. as i you know went on my own healing journey and certainly that journey's not done right <laughs> Yes, but, you see the uh, yeah. and sparkling. So please tell us how you keep that sparkle. I I well, I use I use a lot of the tools, right, that I teach, of course. Mm -hmm. And and I've come to understand for myself that mm -hmm. yes, I have to be compassionate, I have to be kind to myself. 
And that's allowed me to be even more compassionate and kind toward others, right? Mm -hmm. And helping others is what really sparks joy and and connects my heart connects me to everyone and and that really helps with keeping that sparkle as you say (laughs) and what about it helps you sparkle the deep knowingness of it what about the deep knowingness of it the connections being connected for so many years I felt so alone and so isolated Mm -hmm. and so many people struggle with that concept and and truly believe that they're they are alone and that no one will ever understand them Mm -hmm. and over the years of living right I'm 60 now so I've I've lived a while um and in in my courses yeah just a little (laughs) and training and and working with people and and animals um that that sense of isolation that I carried with me Mm -hmm. has 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 disappeared and and, yeah it's it's so important for us to feel connected to be connected to to something greater than ourselves and mm. also to ourselves and mm. also to each other. Beautiful. The, it's almost, it's like a triangle. So it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It is really, really beautiful. So when you feel into your future, what does it feel like? Oh, that's a lovely question too. All right. I'm going to be brutally honest. Good. And say it depends on the day. <laughs> Yay! What a beautiful answer. <laughs> it um when 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 life is going pretty good, right? Then it's it's so easy to, you know, to as you say, feel into the future and and go, yeah, this is this is cool. This is I can I can see me doing this for years and 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 shifting people's lives so that they can shift other people's lives mm-hmm. and and so you know good days that's so easy to to feel into that flow mm-hmm. on on days where i struggle mm-hmm. then i i look into the future and i see darkness <laughs> right and it's like Okay, so it's one of those days. All right, so let me let me wallow in my self pity for a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to acknowledge those feelings, mm-hmm. and then after a while, you go, okay, well, out of all the tools I have, what's going to help me the most right now? Um, the the understanding for me that we have highs and lows. Mm-hmm. And that can be moment to moment, that can be in a day, that can be in a week. If I'm experiencing one of those lows, Mm -hmm. then I know that there's going to be a high because that's what my past has shown me, Mm -hmm. right? There's highs and lows. I've survived them all. I'm still here. I'm going to survive what comes next. What a beautiful answer, because so many people think that once you become spiritual, everybody just floats around like nothing ever goes wrong, and they forget to acknowledge sometimes your feet go lower than the ground. The other thing that I absolutely really love that you highlighted is you sit with it. You sit with it and you allow it. I love that, Alison. Thank you so much for that vulnerability. I feel if more people were vulnerable like that, a lot more people would start healing sooner than having yes. false expectations of themselves. I, I, our time is now coming to the end for the show. So I would like to know from you, if you could leave just one nugget for the listeners, what would that be? 
Hmm. When you struggle, remind yourself that you're still here. Believe in yourself. You can say those words, I believe in myself. Even if you don't feel it at that moment, just repeat those words to yourself out loud. Um, our, our brain hears words differently when we speak them versus when we internally speak them. Mm -hmm. So out loud, I believe in myself. Um, I, I, I am kind. I am compassionate. Any positive concept and repeat it a lot. Mm -hmm. And that will shift our emotions it shifts the the chemistry in our body so it impacts us physically and and most people can't just say it once you got to say it a few times right repeat it throughout the day <laughs> look in the mirror while you're saying it <laughs> even better yes <laughs> yeah that was incredible and on that wonderful note I'm going to say thank you so much for joining us and to our audience, thank you for listening. And Alison, have a beautiful day along with our audience. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you. Oh, it was our pleasure, Alison. Absolutely. Bye-bye, everyone.